Hi everybody, welcome to Tuttle Up Stamping. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm here with you tonight to share with you another online class to go. I hope you'll enjoy my creations that I have for you tonight. Um, I hope that you guys all had a terrific Thanksgiving. I just had the best Thanksgiving. I had my daughter and her husband and grands who finally made it late Monday night um, to Lincoln. And then my son and his wife, Natalie, got here um, on Wednesday. We had a beautiful Thanksgiving day together. We had our Tuttle Trot. Uh, which some people do run a 5K, some of us walk, run, exercise a little bit. And then we all pitched in on cooking for Thanksgiving. Um, we all took little naps. Um, the guys watched the Dallas Cowboys. That's my husband and son's team. And um, then we have a family homemade gifts gift exchange. And um, that was super, super fun. Um, we all have to make homemade gifts and then we steal and exchange them. And then um, we um, had a little dance party to end the evening and then played games. We played um, train, Mexican train, and had a super wonderful time together um, playing that. I won. I won. I had the fewest points, so that's always fun. So when you jump on, will you say hi so that I know you're here? And I'm just getting my computer um, going here so that I can see as comments come in and questions come in. Um, so we are doing an online class to go tonight using the Window Wishes Bundle. Window Wishes is a stamp set that caught my eye from the get-go, and I haven't I haven't done a class on it yet, so I wanted to do that tonight. Here are the dies that go with it. Super fun. Cuts out the window, the car, the house, some candles, a big bow, a wreath, some other trees. It's a super, super fun um, die set to work with. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining me tonight. And just when I just said that, I dropped a die, and I'm nervous that it might be a die that I need tonight. So hopefully, hopefully I didn't, and I will find it. Darn it, just when I held that up, that's what happened. So hopefully we'll be okay. Let's, let's pray for that. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me. Um, before I get started, I just want to talk to you. Um, the Window Wishes Bundle is here on page 36 of the Holiday Mini Catalog. You can get the stamp set and the dies for $50.25. So, as you know, my online classes to go are $35.00. Um, and you get six cards and a kit. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, if you spend 50, I throw in a package of embellishments, um, and get it out in the mail to you. So if you needed this stamp set and die set tonight, you could also end up getting, um, the free package of embellishments shipped to you as well. Hi, Denise. Thanks for joining me. So nice to have all of you here tonight. So that is in the holiday catalog. If you would like to place your order online, I'm going to hold this up for just a second. This is the hostess code that you would want to use. 6NTQYHY7. Okay, you would go to my TuttleUpShop.com. You would uh, type in this host code when they ask for it. And um, then you would be shopping with me to get this kit to go. Now, after this video is over, I will post the host direct link with the host code already embedded in it in the description. And then you don't have to worry about remembering that. Okay. So if you say, if you see it says shop at this link, then you know you're automatically getting that host code in there. Um, to shop with me, okay? You can also get the PDF for $15. You would need to PM me or email me to get that. But you know what? 
Why just get the directions for 15 when you can spend 35 and get the entire kit of six cards and the PDF, right? So just something for you to th think about there. Some exciting news is that this catalog will be going away. It's kind of sad because I have loved this mini catalog. It will be going away at the end of December. But the new stuff is coming. We'll have celebrations starting in January with a new mini catalog. Look at all my look at all my um, post-it note tabs here. Those are all the things I want to be sure I get. That's how much I love this new mini catalog. And, you know, celebration is all about if you spend $50 in any of our catalogs, you can pick out something for free in the celebration. That is always fun. Okay, so I'm going to put those aside. Um, before I get started with Stamping Stamping, um, our online class to go, I want to talk to you about my holiday class stamp -a stack that's coming up this weekend. Now, I had a lot of people email me and say, Judy, it's just such a busy weekend. I wish I could do your holiday class, but you said it was in person only and I'd really like to have it. So I decided to add on a to go option. Okay. And if you would like the class to go, you will make five, five. Five, five, five of each of these cards, okay? You will also get some other added extras that I'll tell you about in just a second. Okay, so here's one of the cards. Super easy, quick. Isn't that fun? We're using the Boughs of Holly uh, designer series paper and an assortment of Christmas sentiments. That's another one. Here's the third. Isn't that pretty? I love the stripes of that designer series paper. And this one here that says joy as well. So if you would like this online, uh, this holiday stamp with stack to go, it's a new option. Not only will you get everything to make 20 cards, you'll get two full rolls of the Garden Green and Real Red ribbon pack. And you will get a whole package of our brushed metallic dots. Hi, Roz. Thanks for coming. And an entire package of our basic white medium envelopes, okay? So you have plenty of envelopes for all of your cards. I will put a link to the Holiday stamp -a stack to go up in the descriptions. So, you know, since I decided to add the to go option, I've had six people message me wanting to take the class to go. So, and the fun thing about this class, you guys, is that it's super fast and easy to put these cards together. If you don't have the holiday uh, stamp sets that I'm using, I used Brightest Glow, Merriest Moments, and Festive and Framed are the three um, sentiment sets I used. You can use those or just use some you already have. That would be fine. The cost is 45 because you make 20 cards. You get a kit for 20 cards. That's quite a bit. Plus the two rolls of ribbon, the embellishments, and the package of envelopes. So consider taking the holiday stamp -a stat to go. I'll get the PDF made this weekend and get everything shipped out by next Monday. Okay. All right. Now, what's next? Okay. So let's talk about art cards. I'm going to go ahead and move everything down here. Um, let me, you're going to get a little dizzy for just a second. There we go. I'm going to flip this down right like that. I'm going to look at my computer here and make sure you are going to be able to see my hands and everything is good to go. Okay. So again, here's the information. You would go to Tuttle Up Shop. If you use the link that I'm going to post in the description after this video is over, it will already put the host code in there for you. Um, or you can take a screenshot right now of this host code. I need your orders for the online class to go. If you want the kit of the cards that I'm making tonight, I need it by Friday, December 3rd. That gives me the weekend to get everything packaged up and sent out to you and, and the PDF made and all of that. All right? Okay, so we're going to start with our first card. We're going to start simple and get gradually a little harder, okay? So here's our very first card. Isn't that fun? Super simple. Now, for all my cards tonight, I am using the shimmery white cardstock. Shimmery white cardstock. 
is the white that I'm using on all of my cards. I like that it adds, I don't know if you can see that, it adds a little shimmer, added kind of snow effect, sparkle to the card, and I just love that, okay? So I'm gonna give you some measurements here. I am using a Coastal Cabana card base, right here, I'll put that right here so you can see it. It's cut four and a quarter by 11, and scored in the middle at five and a half, okay? So that is all ready to go. Um, let me see if I can pull out my bone holder. Hmm, I'm already nervous that whatever die fell is going to be one idea. Okay, I'm just gonna use my scraper here and get a really good line on that. Okay, there we go. And then I have another piece of Coastal Cabana that's four inches by four and a quarter inches. And I have already run this through the Whimsical Trees embossing folder. I don't know if you can see that, but it just gives just some fun, whimsical Christmas trees in the background, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is take my embossed piece and just place it right on top of my card base about a half an inch from the top edge, okay? So I'm gonna be using a lot of liquid glue tonight as well. Roz, it's so good to see you. Laura, hi, Denise, hi. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I do have a gift for someone who watched last week. I just remembered, I forgot um, to announce who that is, but I will show that at the end, okay? There we go. So I'm just adding that whimsical trees embossing folder and the good thing about using liquid glue is it allows you to shore up those edges um so they're nice you get a little wiggle room on that okay so there's that then i have a piece of real red glimmer paper that i've cut three quarters of an inch by four and a quarter inch and i'm just going to put that right here over that seam okay right over that seam and so I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue here and pop that right on there. Just gives a nice finished touch. This is three quarters by four and a quarter. And sometimes I do cut it just a tad bit long um, so I know for sure that it's not going to be too short. Does that make sense? So this is just like an eighth of an inch too long. Um, which I do often. Okay, there we go. Now, um, two more shimmery white pieces that we need. I have one shimmery white piece that's three and three quarters by three and a quarter. And then I have one that is a half an inch by three inches that I'm going to use for my sentiment. Okay, that is really all we need for this card. All right. So, I'm going to start with my snow, um, my snow, and I am using, well, it's not really snow, it's maybe hills is a good word for it. I'm going to be using ink in real red, uh, Sahara Sand, and Coastal Cabana. Those are my colors for the night. So, I'm going to start with. Actually, I'm going to start with my house. I found it easiest if I just stamp my house first and then kind of wrap those snow hills around my house. It seems to work a little bit better. And I would highly recommend that you use one of our foam pads with our foam photopolymer sets, especially ones that are solid images like this house is. It just helps you get a really clear, let me move that out of the way so you guys can see me, a really clear solid image on that house. I'm going to put that about right there. Beautiful. Then I'm going to take my roof line. Um, I like, I'm going to pull in some gray granite ink for my roof. I'm going to put that real red aside. And my roof line is right in front of me, right here. All right, so I'm going to have to put my head over the camera here just a minute and stamp 
that roof line right on there. Okay, could have gotten that a little more solid. Let me see if I can. The nice thing about photopolymer is it allows you to restamp. Mm, you know what? I'm not crazy about that. Let's flip it over, try it one more time. I'm going to get that gray granite on there just a little bit better. There. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're going to toss this out. Cindy, you're getting the real Judy. Luckily, I cut a whole nother one just for things like that. <laughs> Let's try again. All right. Okay. I'm going to go with real red for my house. I should have just left the roof, huh? Um, but it's okay. I'm not really a perfectionist, but when I'm doing my lives, I like things to be nice for you guys. There we go. Much better. Now let me get that roof going in the great granite here. And again, I'm going to have to um, put my head in the camera here just a second. Make sure I'm getting that roof lined up. Ah, beautiful. That was worth redoing, right? Okay, I'm going to put that aside as well. Then I'm going to take this snowbank that kind of curves up, up to the left. And I'm going to use my Sahara Sand. Dirty Snow. Cindy, are you familiar with Dirty Snow? Hi, Renee. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I am not a snow lover, and I especially don't like snow when it starts looking dirty. Do you guys know what I mean? If you guys don't live where there's snow. Snow is pretty when it first comes down, but then if it starts looking... Um, starts looking dirty then that is not fun at all so I have another little piece of snow here somewhere let me see if I can find that maybe I didn't pull it out yes I did hmm. I don't know I'm going to go with this one again, but just turn it the other way. How about that? There we go. And then the small one, I'm just going to ease into this area right here. There we go. All right. I'm going to grab my tree. And I'm going to stamp it in Coastal Cabana. I don't know how I work so hard to have everything organized. And then something always happens, but it's okay. You guys love me. You're always coming back to watch me. And I am so appreciative of that. Okay, so here's my tree. And I am stamping my tree in Coastal Cabana Ink. Right there. Isn't that fun? Um, and then let's do some little red rhinestones. And I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to just have some little red rhinestones coming right out of the chimney. Love is flowing from this house. There we go. Cute, cute, cute. All right. So now that is pretty much all there is to this card, except for my sentiment. So I'm going to pop this up right here over my red glimmer paper. And I'm going to use some dimensionals. Grab those. I just found that other stamp right here. It's okay. It looks great. I'm fine with it the way it is. All right. And then we're going to put some dimensionals on the back side here. So, have you guys started baking for Christmas yet? Um, do you have a specialty? 
that you like to make every year? Do you have something that is a family tradition that you make with your family and your kids? Um, my specialty is homemade caramels. Um, I started making them about, oh my gosh, maybe 30 years ago. And I wrap them all up pretty and put them in pretty packages. And that is my gifts for a lot of my friends um, at Christmas time. So now I'm going to use the Merry Wishes again in real red. Pull that out. Um, so caramels are my main thing. I will make mm, maybe 10 batches of caramels every year. Um, I give them to hairdressers and office friends and um they love them they love them i i we had a secretary in our main office that left um our school and then ended up coming back last week um she just wasn't happy at her old school and she's so great we took her back and um she said, I said, why'd you come back? And she said, because it's getting close to Christmas and I need those caramels. <laughs> it made me laugh. Okay, so this is going to pop up right here. I might even cut this off on this edge just a little bit. Oop. Okay, I'm going to use some dimensionals on the back side. So what do you guys like to make in your family? Drop a drop a statement in the chat and let me know. Um, my friend Becky, who often watches, makes these delicious, there we go, cute, huh? And then she makes delicious chocolate mint cookies. And it's like a thumbprint cookie, a chocolate thumbprint. Um, but in the thumbprint, she puts an Andy's mint and swirls it on. Now, what I like to do when I'm doing three in a row is I like to put the middle one down first. And then go out on either side. And that helps me keep the distance. See, that one's a little closer. Mm, go a little bit further. There we go. Isn't that cute? What do you guys think? Super simple, fast, easy. Could easily make a whole bunch of these. So Raza says, I usually bake lots of cookies this time of year and give out and bring to the people visiting. This year, I'm not. What? Sure, how much I'll get done. My new puppy. Aww. Well, new puppies are pretty special, aren't they? Okay, so I'm going to do some snow. Here's the inside of my card. I'm going to do some snow real quick. Um, I love cookies. I love cookie exchanges. Um, all of those things are my mojo for sure. So here we go. I'm going to do this again. Since I found that other piece of snow, I'm going to use it here. Boop, boop. This is going to kind of come this way. And then I'm going to use that small piece again and put it right there. Then I'm going to take my tree and use that Coastal Cabana ink again. Thanks, Alice. I hope you guys love this. If you love it, give me some hearts and thumbs up in the um, in the comments. There we go. How pretty is that? And why don't we add another sentiment to the inside? It won't hurt, right? So on the inside, let's do, um, here we go. This one that says, may happy moments and wonderful memories be yours this season. I'm going to use real red on that. Kind of bring it all together. Ooh, I smashed that a little bit too hard. There we go. How cute is that? 
All right, so that ends my first card, card number one. I hope you love it. Um, so this is one of the three cards that you'll get in your kit this week if you choose to take this class to go. So I always want to make sure my hands don't have ink on them. I'm going to add some adhesive to the back side here. And, oops, did you see that? I almost put that in upside down. Um, all right, there we go. That's a cute finishing touch to the inside of that card, isn't it? I love that. All right, so there we go. There's card number one. Thanks, Alice, thanks for sharing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put all this stuff away. Give me just a second um, so that I don't get my projects mixed up here. So um, besides caramels, my other, I do a brown butter cookie. Um, I do some uh, bars that are called Disney bars. Um, they're like seven layer bars on steroids. Um, let me clean everything off and put stuff away that I don't need anymore. Um, So I hope you guys are liking my new format here of online classes to go. I think it just gives you more ideas, right? Um, and also the ability um, to make the cards if you really want them and to get the kit, right? I'm using my chamois here. You can see my chamois has been well loved. But the nice thing about the chamois is they never go bad. Um, sometimes I buy a new one just because I don't like how yucky it's looking, but this is one of the first ones I ever bought. Um, so, um, that is why it looks so well loved. All right, let me put some of these stamps away, get them out of the way here. So this year, because all the kids were here for Thanksgiving, they will not be here. For Christmas which is kind of sad um, but it'll be okay we're gonna go to my brothers who lives in Dallas and um, spend Christmas Day with him let's see I think this needs to go around um, and then we will go on to Midland after Christmas because the other side of the family is coming and I guess we should probably give them some time with the grands as well, right? Okay, that's card number one. Let's look at card number two. I'm going to start moving some things over. So here's my second card. Isn't that cute? And this time I'm actually using the window um view die and the inside pane right there. Um, I just figured out what just fell, but it's going to be okay because I've already, I've already cut it, but hopefully I will find it. That's always, it's nerve wracking when things fall, but I've already cut one out ahead of time. Okay. Um, and we are using cherry cobbler cardstock for our base. So let me grab this kit out of here, right here. And the brick and mortar embossing folder are really the hits of the show here. Okay, so you're gonna take a piece of cherry carb cobbler cardstock, cut five and a half by eight and a half and score it at four and a quarter, okay? It's a pretty standard measurement, right? Then I took Sahara sand and I cut it three and three fourths by five. And then I ran it through our brick, brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. Okay, and it gives that kind of brick, um, it gives a brick embossed look to it. So I'm gonna move that aside there. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my brick. Hi, Christy, thanks, I love this set too. Thanks for watching me tonight. Um, okay, so, hmm. 
You know, this set, like I said before, is one of the sets that caught my eye at the very beginning when um, the mini catalog came out. Got a big blob there. I'll have to get some of that off there. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I got sidetracked by all the other beautiful ones. Okay, I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock and just kind of flatten that out so there's not a big blob right there. Okay. Just going to place that right on there. And there's no right side up or down, so either way, it'll look fine. All right. Now, I... You're going to need some other pieces. I'm going to tell you what I did. I took an early espresso piece, about two and three fourths by four and a half, and I cut out the outside and the inside all at once. So I put it on here like this, outside, inside, like that. Cut it out all at once, okay? And I got these two pieces right here. So the inside of the large frame will cut the edge around this. And then this window pane frame just cuts out the holes, okay? So that means that these two pieces are perfectly going to fit into each other. Okay, now what I did is I took another piece of shimmery white and I only cut out this. I did not use the outside of the frame. I'm just keeping it here in my stash for later on, but I am using the inside of my frame um, to give the light on the inside of my card. Okay. So now I have all my window pieces cut and ready to go, all right? Then I have a bow, and all I did was take a piece of old olive cardstock. This is a little bigger than four and a quarter by four and a quarter, but really all you need is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, okay? I inked it up with my bow and my... Um, old olive ink pad. Let me grab that here. Ink it up. Stamp it on. Like that. And then we have this great bow die that cuts it out. So I would just run that through. Get it all lined up there. Use a piece of post-it note tape if you can. And this is what you end up with, okay? All right, then I'm gonna put that away. I'm gonna tell you what I did on this inside piece of white here, okay? That I cut out of shimmery white. I have got my brush, my blending brush, and I'm using Night of Navy. So I had some blending brushes before Stampin' Up! came out with theirs, and some of them are colored. So I've kept this one navy. So I'm going to take my Night of Navy ink, swirl it, and then when you're doing blending, you're going to start off the edge and come on to the cardstock. That keeps you from getting like a really rough, see, like right there. Um edge to the card. Okay, so that's what I did. I'm going to get some of that off, and then I bring in my Coastal Cabana, and I just softened that up as it gets closer to the bottom of the window. So it looks like night is dawning. It's not quite pitch black yet, right? So I'm just blending it all together. There we go. I love using blending brushes. How many of you enjoy using blending brushes? Oh, you can't see it. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Oh my gosh, you just missed that whole beautiful blending. Okay, so 
right here. I did Night of Navy up at the top, okay? And then I brought in Coastal Cabana and did it. So you start off the edge and then you just kind of come in like this, okay? So I did Night of Navy up at the top and then I did Coastal Cabana kind of right underneath it, softening up the whole thing, okay? There we go. Thank you, Alice, for pointing that out to me. Okay, so now on this piece of white, I'm going to take my same little snow bank that I used before. Let me grab that one here. And, but this time, you know, it's, it's been a little snowy, but not quite, um, snowy enough to take all the green out of the yard. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm gonna stamp just a little snow bank, kind of like that, all right? Then I'm gonna take my pine trees that are kind of triangular pine trees and I'm gonna stamp those two right over on that side right there like that, okay? Then I'm gonna get my house, but this time my house is gonna be a solid uh, early espresso. Isn't this fun? It's fun to kind of just put all these pieces together um, to make like a little window scene. Okay, so here I am. I'm gonna stamp my house right there. Oops. Darn it. Let me get a little more ink on that bottom edge right there. Line it all up. There we go. Okay. Got a little off, but it's okay. And then I'm going to add my roof line. This time I want to purposely kind of leave a little bit of a seam so that you can tell. There we go. All right, there's my house. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this window piece inside my frame, right like that, okay? And then this frame, the pane frame, is going to go right on top of it, right inside like that, okay? So let me get my liquid glue. Uh, it's fun, Jeannie. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this yesterday, getting this all ready to go. Um, and it does help to play with it just a little bit as far as knowing how to cut out this uh, window frame and die. It's not hard. It just, you know, you have to figure it out a little bit. So you're right. I'm kind of figuring it out for you. Okay, so there we go. That goes inside my window frame. And then what I did is I turned this whole thing over and I used a little bit of Terran tape to hold my white piece onto the Evening Evergreen piece here. I'm just adding some Terran tape right there. And again, up here at the top. And then I'll add some dimensionals. There we go. Just gonna hold that piece in there. And then I'm gonna add some dimensionals to the whole outside of this. And I kind of cover those edges when I can. Um, just to kind of help again hold that whole thing together up here at the top and then put a couple of them on the inside here. Thanks for joining me, Jeannie. How was first day of the job? Jeannie started a brand new job. She's been working nights in a hospital as a um, bone marrow cancer nurse and she just got moved to daytime so her life is about to change forever i bet you're feeling like it's going to be so much better huh okay so i'm going to add this right here to the front of my card 
and then I'm gonna put my bow right over my window, right like that. Now, I popped mine up. I don't think you have to. Um, I think sitting it flat would be fine, but it does add kind of a nice dimension uh, to the bow hanging over the window. So I'm gonna add some minis here. I think that house could look a little crisper than one I did yesterday. I think I've got a little flustered when I was doing this, but it's okay. I think you get the gist of it, and the PDF will explain everything. Okay, right there. Now, the next thing I need to do is take a little scrap of uh, that shimmery white, and I'm using the word peace, which is right here. And I'm gonna stamp it in Cherry Cobbler ink. Right up here in the corner. I'm gonna do that one more time. I think I pushed a little too hard on that. There we go, I like that one better. And then I'm gonna get my fancy scissors. And all I have to do is kind of rough cut this out. And then I'm going to pop it up with some minis right on the bottom of that frame. Helps if it's not upside down, right? There we go. And then I'm gonna add some of my gold, brushed gold embellishments. I'm gonna put one right up here. There we go. What do you think? I used the more bronzy color on this one. I used the gold on this one. They're both beautiful, right? Okay, and that's all there is to card number two. What do you think? I would probably put a piece of that shimmery white cardstock on the inside and maybe stamp some of these trees on the inside as well. I will be sure to put a piece for you to do that inside your card. So that is, thank you, Alice. I love it too. Okay, so now we have one card left. Let me get all of this put away. Um... So how many of you out there have played with this um, set already? Like I said, I knew immediately when I saw it in the catalog that I knew it was going to be one that I would love. I love cars with trees. I don't know why, but I do. So <laughs> um, I knew that that was going to be something I would love about this and... Um, that's why the next card that I'm making, you will see that I made it into a car with a tree on it. How cute is that? Okay. So the cool thing about this card um, is not only the car with the tree, which I love. I really wanted to use that wreath, right? And then what I love about this card is that the top folds up and it creates a little pocket here at the bottom for to slide a little card in that you can write on. Isn't that pretty with the wreath and those words? But you can also use it as a gift card holder as well. A gift card would, would fit perfectly inside of there, okay? So let's make this card really quick. I'll give you all the measurements. Let me pull it out here. Okay, this was fun to do. I created a little snow scene. So, first of all, the main card base is garden green, and it is cut four and a quarter by 11, and then I scored it at two inches and at seven and a half inches, okay? Two inches and seven and a half inches. And then it folds into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, which is our typical card base, okay? So then what I'm going to do 
is take two pieces of our Garden Green Gingham Cottage DSP. I'm using this one with the smaller check. There's the larger. I just thought that was a little too big maybe. Um, and one of these is cut one and seven eighths by four. That's this one. And then the larger one is cut three and a quarter by four. Okay, so the smaller one is gonna go down here on this two inch panel right there. Let me add some liquid glue to that. Center it side to side, there we go. And then the other one is gonna go on the top panel right here. And remember this is three and a quarter by four. And it's going to go right there. There we go. Now, to create our pocket, so this is the way it's going to fold, but I want to create a pocket here. I'm just going to take my liquid glue and do a very thin strip on either side and press that down. And by the time I get to making the pocket, it will be all ready, all ready to go. Okay, so there's my card base. I'm gonna set that aside for just a second. Then I have a bunch of white pieces and um, for die cutting and for stamping. Okay, so here we go. First of all, for the inside of our card, you want a piece that's three and a half by four and a half. Three and a half by four and a half. Let me move these out of the way. And we're gonna do some stamping on this. We are going to stamp the words that say, um, for lots of joy at Christmas. And we're gonna do that in real red. Okay, then I took my wreath, which we're gonna get back to the wreath again here in just a second, but I took my Garden Green ink pad. And I inked it up with the Garden Green really well all the way around, okay? And then I'm gonna stamp it off once because I don't want the green to overtake the center of our card. I want it to look like it's just kind of shining through it, okay? There we go. So then this piece now will per fit perfectly into that pocket that I just created right there, okay? So that'll be our card. Then let's create our little window scene here. So you're gonna need some shimmery white cardstock and you're gonna need a four by four piece. And that four by four piece you're gonna use to cut out the outside of the window frame and you also need the inside of the window frame, okay? Both out of that shimmery white. So that's what I use that piece for. Then you also want another piece of an inside um, to create a snow scene with, and that'll make sense in just a second. And then you're gonna want the window pane in basic black, okay? So this is cut out of a basic black. So I used just a sheet of basic black that was three inches by four inches, okay? Three inches by four inches. And I had to still center it, right, on the center of this paint so that the outside edge that's cut would perfectly fit in to this white piece right there, okay? So you still have to use both pieces when you're cutting this out, the outside piece and also the pane piece that fits in. So I'll just keep these extra panes for another project later on, all right? Okay, so I took another piece of that window pane in white, 
an, the extra piece, and I used my snow edge pieces. So there are dies that cut out a snow edge, just like we stamped the snow edge before. And I just used my die to cut this window pane into a snowy edge kind of diagonally that way. And then I moved it down here and I did another snowy edge that way. And you'll see why I did that here in just a second. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put those pieces aside. I'm gonna get my snowflakes in Pool Party. And I'm just gonna add snowflakes like all over the top here of my window pane. It's gonna look like it's snowing outside just randomly all over here. About two thirds of the way down. And then I'm gonna take my snow piece here and I'm gonna attach it right like that so that looks like a snow bank. And then the bottom one is going to overlap it a little bit like that. So it looks like you have two banks of snow. Okay, so let me add this one first. There we go. And the reason you use that window pane is, look, you get the perfect width on both sides there. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing here. I kind of figured this one out all on my own somehow. And then you just want to make sure that all the edges are shored up on the bottom and the sides here. Okay, there we go. Now, we're going to do quite a bit of stamping. Okay, we are going to stamp on a piece of shimmery white. We are going to stamp the car in real red. Right there. We're gonna stamp our car wheels. Yes, there is a separate stamp just for the car wheels. It's right like this. And this the die that cuts these out is pretty slick. I can't wait for you guys to see that. So I'm gonna do that in um, gray granite. There we go. And then I'm gonna do my wreath and my trees in garden green. Here's a wreath. There we go. And I'm gonna have a double tree. And I'm gonna have two single trees. And then I'm gonna take my words, Merry Christmas, and I'm gonna stamp it in real red. And that would be all the pieces that you would need. Now the cool thing is, is that you can die cut all of these out in one swoosh, except for your single trees. Your single trees, you're going to have to, um, so I would put my single, double tree die right there, um, my car die. I might have gotten those a little too close. Since you have to do it twice, oh look, that'll work. Okay, so my car die would go right there. My wheels on the car would be right there. I would definitely use post-it note tape to kind of hold all of these in place, right? Um, my single tree die right there, and then my wreath, which you kind of have to move around just there you go, fits right like that. You could cut those all out at once, okay? And then you would have to move this die over and cut that single tree die out again. 
Okay, when you're done, you're gonna end up with all of these pieces. A car, I just rough cut the Merry Wishes. We have a wreath, we have our wheels, we have a single tree, another single tree, and we should have a double tree right there. All right, so let me put all these dies back so I don't lose them. All right, and I'm gonna show you how I put all of this onto my little window scene right here. Um, I don't need the wreath, but yet. Okay, so my double trees, I just adhered right here to this edge. Right like that. And then I have a single tree. It's right down here. And then I need to put my wheels on my car. Now look at how they cut this die cut. Do you see how it has like a little handle right there? That allows you to put a little bit of glue right there and just press that on to the back side of your car and those little wheels fit perfectly. Isn't that swift? Okay, so that goes right like that. And then we're gonna take this other tree and we're just gonna attach it to the top of our car. So we're just gonna put a very thin edge right here on our tree and attach it right there to the top. I moved it just a little bit to the top of our car like that, okay? Here we go. I know, I keep going off the camera. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this up right here on the bottom. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna add a dimensional right there and maybe a little small one over on this side right here. Like that. Isn't that fun? All right. So, now my window pane here, the black one, is gonna go right on top of all of that, right like that, see how nice it fits? Add a little liquid glue, just a tad. Don't need to overdo it here because it'll all seep out on you if you do. Just in some primary places, the corners, few of those, there we go. Just gonna lay that right on top of there. Now it might not be a bad idea to use an adhesive sheet behind this, I thought about that, but then you'd waste a lot, like all the inside would be wasted. So I decided in this case, we're just gonna use um, glue for that. And then, like I did before, I can adhere this right to the inside, and I'm gonna do what I did before, okay? So I'm just gonna take my tear and tape. Here we go. And I'm gonna adhere it to my bottom edge, right here, and to my top edge. Right here, just kind of hold that all in place, okay? If it goes off the edge like I just did, I would just trim that little piece off right there. All right? And then, let's see here. There we go. Now, I did a little something extra here. I cut a piece of shimmery white, and let me see if I have my little note to tell me what size here it is. It is one and three fourths by two and a quarter. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm gonna put this sheet right here along the bottom of my window. I'm gonna glue that together. And that is so that when you lift this up here, you get a really nice edge on the inside of your window right there. Otherwise, that tear and tape and everything is gonna show around there, okay? So I only put this on 
so that it would give a clean edge to the inside of my windowsill when you open it up. It's not so sloppy looking, okay? There we go. Now the piece that I dropped on the ground is a little skinny window panel that was just right here. Oh my goodness. Okay, here it is. Knew it was here. Okay, it's just a skinny, and it just gives kind of a finished edge to the bottom. So it looks a little more like a windowsill. It's not necessary. I didn't use it on the last card, and I still thought it looked super cute. Um, but just adds a little added touch to your windowsill right there. Okay, there we go. Now, we've got our wreath. It's going to go right up here at the top. I love this wreath. And our Merry Wishes that I just rough cut out with scissors is going to go right on top of that, right like that. So all I did is put a little dot on either end of this and set it right on top of my wreath, right like that. Okay, then I'm going to pop this up at the top of my windowsill. Isn't that cute? I'm going to use some mini. dots around the edge here. I like the design of this card. I like that it can be used just as a card or also as a um, gift card holder if you wanted it to, right? There we go. I'm going to just attach that right there at the top. And then I'm going to grab some white baker's twine. Just cut it in, tie it into a small bow to add to our wreath. Any other ribbon would be a little too much, I think. So I think Baker's Twine is just the right consistency to make that work. And I'm going to take a glue dot and roll it up just a little bit into a ball. There we go. Add it to the back side of that Baker Twine bow. Oop. And then I'm just going to attach that bow right there to the bottom of my wreath. And I wanted one more final touch. I want to take, let me get all this stuff out of the way. I'm such a messy stamper. Okay, so um, I'm going to take my red rhinestones again which this is what you would get free if you placed an order of 50 or more and you know this bundle is 50 so if you want to get this bundle in my online store then you could get six cards to make because i'd send you two of each of these cards um, and then you'd already have things pre-cut and ready to go for when you I kind of want to just stick this one underneath here. This just look like little red berries there on my wreath. Okay, now I'm going to take this whole, well, in that window, isn't that so cute? And I'm just going to pop it up right here on the front of my card and just try to center it as best I can. So I'm just going to add dimensionals just to the top here of my window. And again, I'm going to place it over some of those edges just to kind of hold all of that in place, right? There we go. And... Set that right there on the 
the front of my card. So here's this card. It opens like this. And pull this little card out to write a note. And you also have space right there to add in a gift card if you want to. Okay? I hope you love the cards that I've made tonight. Let me show them all to you. So I have the green card tree, tree card, Merriest Wishes. I have the red brick piece. And then I have the Coastal Cabana Glimmery Red with the red rhinestones that also says Merriest Wishes. So I hope you love all of these. I'll let those sit right there for a minute. And before we leave tonight, I want to make sure that I tell you who our winner of the gift last week was. So let me move everything up. Boop, boop. There we go. And Connie Hyde. Hi, Connie. I don't know who you are, but thanks for watching my Facebook Live last week and commenting and uh, giving me some thumbs up. And Connie will win one of my little gift bags. This is the um, gingerbread house, and it has that gingerbread hot chocolate, a candy cane, some of those fun marshmallows from last week's class. So I will be here next Monday. Thanks for watching me. If you would like this online class to go, I need you to go to my tuddleupshop.com. Um, I will post a link up in the description and you can just click on it. It'll take you right to my store. That will give you a card kit to make two of each of these cards, okay? And if you spend more than 50, I'll also throw in a package of the rhinestone embellishments. So I hope you enjoyed tonight. You guys always humble me by watching me and coming with me, and I so appreciate that. So God bless everybody. Have a blessed week, and start thinking about what you're gonna bake. Hmm. You can send them to me, 3011 Shelley Street, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. <laughs> Love you guys. Thanks. See you soon. Oh, let's see if it'll turn off. There we go.